Oh, Boogie right. Man Ben coming round the band is Boogie Man Ben. Is Boogie Man Ben. Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, yes, I am taking a very big horror departure here, um, and this is going to be going on for a couple of weeks. I'm recording this on June 19th, and exactly two weeks from today, we will be seeing the premiere of the fourth movie in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise, Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. This is a movie that I have been waiting for for 30 years. So excited to see the return of one of my favorite characters of all time, played by one of my favorite people, my favorite actors of all time, that being Mr. Eddie Murphy and the character of Axel Foley. Um, I thought it would be fun to kind of take a little journey down memory lane in some of these videos. I am going to be showing some things I have in my collection too from the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. Um, mostly like uh, press kits and things like that. Um, but I thought it'd be a lot of fun to do something like this leading up to um, the premiere of the fourth film, which is going to be on Netflix. I'm a little disappointed about that. I wish it was going to theaters, but Paramount did sell the rights to Netflix back in 2019 to distribute this film. Um, I kept hoping maybe they would do like a marathon or something like that in theaters, show all four films. I would have been there absolutely if they had done it in a theater close to me, but you can't, uh, beggars can't be choosers. Um, this is something that I never thought would come to be after so many false starts. I even talked about it several times on this channel over the years. And back in 2015, I kind of just threw up my hands and said, I don't think it's ever going to happen. And it did. And I can't wait to see it. I've watched every interview that Eddie Murphy has given from The Tonight Show, The Today Show. He was also on Late Night with Seth Meyers. Um, just uh, the clips I've seen, just a few clips here and there. The movie looks a lot of fun. It really has that feeling of that original, uh, the original two films. And even though Beverly Hills Cop 3 is my least favorite, um, it is still a film that I enjoy. And uh, the last couple of weeks I've been marathoning all of them, uh, just going, even though I've seen them so many times over my lifetime, um, I just went back and rewatched all of them. I saw the first one in the movie theater when I was 10. Uh, the second one came out when I was 13. And the last one that came out in theaters, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 3 came out when I was 20. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about all of these. For today, I'm gonna start with the third film in the franchise. This was the original DVD set that came out in 2002. I remember taking the day off from work to go and get this. Um, I kind of played hooky that day um, and spent the entire day uh, watching these. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be starting with the third film, which is a lot of people's least favorite film in the franchise. The thing that you just notice right off the bat with Beverly Hills Cop 3 is Axel Foley doesn't seem like he did in the first two films. Now the reasoning behind this that Eddie Murphy uh, talked about when you know, talking to John Landis who directed the film, but he told him that Axel Foley is now an adult and he's not no longer the wisecracking, you know, rookie cop that he was in the first two films. But it just, there's just something off about the performance because you know, you just, you're waiting for him to do something outlandish like he did in the other two films, whether it was, you know, how he got into um, the Harrow Club or, you know, in part two where he's able to uh, get the house, you know, the, 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 the mansion and tell the construction workers to leave. Um, just how he was able to sort of, you know, bullshit his way into everything. He just doesn't do that in this film. And it just, it is sort of, kind of weird when you watch it but I have to be honest with you I saw this movie in the theater eight times and I'm not lying um, I saw it full price twice by myself um, I went to the movies a lot by myself when I was younger and then I took my mom to see it once but that was when they they started so it's sort of how like they have now where when movies, movies don't, don't perform very well they kind of move them to VOD to see if they can make up uh, the revenue that way well, what they did with this film is after, you know, it kind of got smoked by movies like uh, the Flintstone movie, the live action Flintstone movie, the movie Maverick with Mel Gibson, James Garner and Jodie Foster. And then Speed came out and just completely obliterated any hope of Beverly Hills Cop uh, doing well. It actually opened in third place, which was really strange. Um, but then it went to these dollar theaters. Now, there was a dollar theater that was really close to where I lived, and that's where I went and saw it. So it was a buck. It was a dollar to go see it. So I went and saw it six times at that dollar theater. And um, I still really enjoy the film. It's a, it's a, it's a part of my childhood. And uh, I remember, you know, just, you know, telling my friends to go see it, uh, showing it to my grandfather, my late grandfather, Henry, who was a huge fan of the original two that I watched with him. Um, you know, so, you know, it's, it, it was important to me. And, uh, 
while it doesn't have the goods that the first two did, um, re-watching it just really made me happy um, and really brought me back in a nostalgia way back to my childhood. This movie was not only shot in Los Angeles, um, they also used uh, locations at Universal Studios where they created some of the rides. They actually used the earthquake ride uh, for Alien Attack in this film. Um, it was of course shot in Beverly Hills as well, but they actually did a lot of the exterior for Wonder World, the amusement park that's featured heavily in this, at Great America. It was Paramount's Great America at the time, but it was a park that I had gone to so many times when I was a kid. Um, it used to be Marriott's Great America before that, but my dad took me there, my mom took me there. We went there so many times and I had no idea that he was filming the movie there. I didn't find out until the trailer came out and I'm like, I know that park, that's Great America. Holy shit, he was that close to me. Um, so yeah, I was bummed. This is again before the internet, before there was a way to sort of, you know, get uh, daily updates or weekly updates on a movie's production. I didn't know until the movie came out. And to discuss a little bit about the plot of the, of the film. While investigating a car theft ring, Axel Foley comes across something much bigger than that. The same men who killed his boss are running a counterfeit money ring out of a theme park in Los Angeles. Movie stars Eddie Murphy as Detective Axel Foley, Judge Reinhold as Sergeant Billy Rosewood, Hector Elizondo as Detective John Flint, Teresa Randall as Janice, Timothy Carhart as Ellis DeWald, Bronson Pinchot as Serge, and Gil Hill as Douglas Todd. Movie was written by uh, Steve E. D'Souza and directed by John Landis. When asked in 1989 about a third installment, Eddie Murphy said, there's no reason to do it, I don't need the money, and it's not going to break any new ground. How often can you have Axel Foley talk fast and get into a place he doesn't belong? During the script's early drafts, the plot concerned Foley, Rosewood, and Taggart going to London to rescue Captain Andrew Bogomil, Ronnie Cox, who was being held hostage by terrorists during an international police convention. However, problems such as scripting issues and budgeting caused pre-production to slow to a point where both John Ashton and Ronnie Cox had to drop out due to obligations to other film projects. Ashton's part was rewritten as John Flint, played by Hector Elizondo, and dialogue was inserted to explain that Taggart had retired and moved to Phoenix. Cox's character's absence is never addressed in the Rejected ideas for COP3 included a Robert Towns screenplay in which Foley had to deal with celebrity status, a scenario teaming Murphy with Sean Connery as a Scotland Yard detective, and another Axel in London idea where his Scotland Yard counterpart would have been played by John Cleese. The last would have involved British gangsters loosely based on the real-life Cray brothers who were captured in Detroit and transported to London by Jeffrey, Axel's friend from... Beverly Hills Cop and Beverly Hills Cop 2, played by Paul Reiser, and Axel would have gone overseas after the gangster's henchman broke them out of custody and murdered Jeffrey. This was scrapped because producers Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer decided it was too close to the story of Michael Douglas's 1989 film Black Rain. When writer Stephen E. D'Souza was brought in, he originally wrote the story as more of a diehard in a theme park. He was told that each of the rides had he had designed would cost about $10 million to build and the whole film would cost about $70 million. When box office results for Murphy's 1992 comedy The Distinguished Gentleman came in, Paramount ordered the budget to be cut to $55 million. Paramount had earlier told Bro Simpson and Bruckheimer that they would only outlay $25 million for a proposed version to be set in New York City. One of the main reasons that the producing team parted ways with the studio. Joel Silver was set to take over producing duties from Simpson and Bruckheimer. However, negotiations on a large budget resulted in production delays leading to Silver quitting production. It was at this time that producers Mace Newfield and Robert Ream took over the project. Cons consequently, the film became more about the investigation and less about the action. Principal photography began on September 8, 1993. The final chase scene through the land of the dinosaurs featuring 11 animatronic dinosaurs was filmed at Universal Studios Stage 37. Exterior scenes set in the theme park were filmed at Paramount's Great America now known as California's Great America in Santa Clara, California, after Knott's Berry Farm declined permission. The three-armed Ferris wheel rescue scene used Great America's Sky Whirl. One shootout sequence was filmed inside the earthquake ride of the Universal Studios theme park. The Sherman Brothers wrote the Wonder World theme song, filming wrapped on January 25th of 1994. Beverly Hills Cop 3 was released on May 25th, 1994 and grossed $42.6 million in the United States and $76.5 million at the foreign box office for a worldwide total of 119.2 million. The film received negative reviews from critics and was considered by them and Murphy himself as the weakest film in the series. 
Burgos Cop 3 was criticized harshly and currently holds an 11% rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on 56 reviews. The critical consensus reads, despite being said in amusement park, Beverly Hills Cop 3 forgets to have any fun as it churns out uninspired violence and witless gags with an uncharacteristically lethargic Eddie Murphy not helping matters. Metacritic, which assigns a normalized score rated at 16 out of 100 based on 15 reviews, including overwhelmingly dislike Richard Natalie of Variety called it a... Return to form by Eddie Murphy that runs out of steam before the end. Owen Gleiberman of, Net, uh, of Entertainment Weekly rated it a D and called Murphy's performance joyless and depressing. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B on an A to F scale. In an interview in 1994, Eddie Murphy said that Beverly Hills Cop 3 is different from the trilogy's first and song because Axel is more mature and no longer are the wisecracking working cop. During the same year, Murphy said he thought Beverly Hills Cop 3 was an inf infinitely better than Beverly Hills Cop 2. About the experience on making the movie, John Landis said, Cop 3 was a very strange experience. The script wasn't any good, but I figured, so what? I'll make it funny with Eddie. But then I discovered on the first day when I started giving Eddie some shtick, he said, you know, John, Axel Foley is an adult now. He's not a wise-ass anymore. So with Beverly Hills Cop 3, I had this strange experience where he was very professional, but he just wasn't funny. I would try to put him in funny situations and he would find a way to step around that. He would find a way to step around them. It's an odd movie. There are things in it I like, but it's an odd movie. In, the, in an interview with the AV Club in 2009, Bronson Pinchot claimed that Eddie Murphy was really depressed at the time Beverly Hills Cop 3 was being filmed, claiming that Murphy was low-spirited and had a very low energy level. That sort of makes that's, sense. You know, and that's what it seems like, even when you rewatch it now. There's moments where you can see little glimpses of the Axel Foley we love from the first two films. That doesn't mean there's not great moments in this. I still think the Ferris wheel spider scene is terrific when uh, when Axel saves the two kids uh, from the ride. That's, that's one, of one of my favorite moments in the Beverly Hills Cop films and I think it's played really well um, as he's trying to get to the kids to rescue them and I think it works for the scene I actually think it's a really really well staged action scene um, also the shootout at the end of the film is really good in the theme park and going through the, di the different rides, like the alien attack ride which is earthquake from Universal Studios or the land of the dinosaurs I had so much fun watching those scenes and I think they really are done very well the thing about cop 3 that is kind of strange is some of the it's, it's got a slapstick vibe more than the first two, especially um, part two, which is much more uh, action-oriented because of Tony Scott's background. But uh, the other thing that's from this one is John Ashton as Taggart. Um, Bogomil not being in it, I did miss Ronnie Cox, but he wasn't as glaring as not having John Ashton in this. I love Hector Elizondo, and I think he does a great job as John Flint, but he doesn't have that history with Foley that Rosewood had and Taggart had. And Rosewood being in it, I felt like they didn't use Rosewood enough in this. They didn't use Ju uh, Judge uh, Reinhold enough in this. And uh, especially with his job title, the DDO JSIOC, which is, is really funny, and I think they could to use that a little bit more but Taggart not being in it and having retired just didn't I, I really didn't like that and just the that the three of those guys together especially in part two that's the that's the heart of the film is that relationship the friendship that those three have um, so that was something that was really missing from me. I have so much fun re-watching it. It's a big blast of nostalgia for me. Yes, it's the lesser of the three films, but there's still a lot to like about it, and I really love Teresa Randall in it as well. Timothy Carhart is a very strange villain. He's the he's he's a little too cartoonish, but I do like the actor, and I've seen him uh, give really good performances in his career. But he's, he's just not as interesting as uh, Maxwell Dent or uh, Victor Maitland. Um, but yeah, I still have fun watching this film, and I and I really just am grateful that I had it growing up. I'm really looking forward to part four, and I'm curious if other people are fans of Beverly Hills Cop 3. Let me know what you guys think of the movie down in the comment section below. Are you guys excited about uh, this new uh, film, uh, Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, the fourth film, the long overdue fourth film? And I probably haven't been this excited for a movie ever in my life. So, yes. Um, Beverly Hills Cop 3, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Let me know if you guys are excited for the new film that's coming out. And uh, my next video will be on Beverly Hills Cop 2. Uh, I hope everyone enjoys these. I'm going to be peppering them in, uh, as we get closer to the release of Beverly Hills Cop uh, Axel F, which is going to be premiering on Netflix on July 3rd. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope everyone's doing well. I'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always.
Hey, my fellow Fright Fiends, I just want to thank everyone for supporting Boogeyman Bones Horror Zone. If you haven't yet subscribed and you'd like to, please hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I try to drop a video at least once or twice a week. Uh, the Horror Zone is a passion of mine, and it really makes me happy that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. Peace.